Hey, have you heard? Of course you have. Apple just released 10.6.6 for Final Cut Pro. Is it all hype? Is it cool? What's hot and what's not? I'm Dylan John and let's go over this long anticipated update. Let's first start with the feature that got most of us excited when we watched the Final Cut Pro trailer for the iPad, the scene removal mask. The ability to cut out your subject without the use of a green screen. Is it hot or is it not? In my opinion, it gets a room temperature rating. Room temperature. The reason being, it takes too many different shot factors and pre-planning for it to work well, especially considering there are plugins out there that can do a lot better. On Apple's website, here are the list of requirements for the scene removal mask to work well. It should have a static background and be placed on a tripod. Apple also suggests having a few extra frames of the clip without the subject in it. It should be shot in a bright, evenly lit place, preferably indoors. It should have good contrast between the subject and background. There shouldn't be any strong moving shadows. The shot should have a visually simple background without complex patterns or structures like windows and bookshelves. Okay, so you basically have to know that you're gonna remove the background and everything has to be pretty set up to use it. Now, it's not totally horrendous. The reason I'm giving it a room temperature rating is because if you follow those suggestions, it can work okay. The big thing that'll help it to work is making sure whatever you want cut out is not in the shot in the beginning or at the end of the shot. At the end of the day though, this built-in feature doesn't compare to certain plugins like Keeper from FX Factory, which gives you the options to adjust your key. But then again, this is a free built-in tool that you now have in Final Cut Pro. The next feature in this update is this new color adjustments correction. This color tool is brought over from the new Final Cut Pro on iPad because the FCP on the iPad doesn't have any color wheels and stuff. Lame, I know. So in order to transfer over your projects from the iPad to Mac, they needed to add this for compatibility. These photo app type sliders are basic. It's kind of a pain to read through them to adjust what you want. And it takes more adjustments to do something like color correct a shot. For example, this shot can be corrected with a simple push of my global hue slider with my color wheels, but with the color adjustments tool, I have to adjust a few sliders to get it to look okay. Now it apparently is also for correcting HDR footage as well. It'll automatically select the correct control range depending if you're working in SDR or in different HDR types. But once again, I don't see how these sliders affect your footage differently than using your color wheels in an HDR project. Your color wheels should work fine for whatever your project settings are set to. For example, this correction is using my wheels and this is with the color adjustments tool. Nearly the same result, but it took longer with the sliders and it was just a more annoying process. So for me, this feature gets a not hot rating. Not hot. Next up, we have automatic color management. And this is the best new feature from this update, in my opinion. This update basically makes it so now when you want to edit HDR clips on a standard Rec. 709 timeline, it automatically conforms your footage to fit within the standards of that Rec. 709 color space. So for example, if you have iPhone footage that you wanna bring into your YouTube video that you're editing, instead of the old process where we had to drop on HDR tools from the effects browser, now it just automatically conforms. No steps needed. You'll see if we open our inspector window and head to the bottom of the video inspector, we have this new color conform section. You'll notice Final Cut automatically took my iPhone clip, which is in HDR HLG, and it conformed it to Rec. 709 automatically. This automatic color management feature also does the reverse. So if you're grading in an HDR project, and you bring in a standard Rec. 709 clip, it uses inverse tone mapping to expand that SDR shot out to fit within the HDR color space of your choosing. If we head back to the color conform section in the inspector window, you'll see Final Cut converted this SDR clip to HDR PQ, which is what this project is set to. By switching to manual, you have the ability to adjust your peak brightness in this instance. So I'm able to bring my brightness up closer to around 1000 nits to make it look more like an HDR clip. However, it is important to note that I'm pretty positive this is gonna introduce some unwanted artifacts or inconsistencies. 
I imagine it is equivalent to dragging a 1080p shot on a 4K timeline. Sure, it is possible, but the quality is gonna be crap. But from the quick tests I've done, I've definitely seen some issues that occur, but I'm actually surprised how well it does. It's better than I thought. If for some reason you wanna turn off this automatic conform, just hit command and comma to open your preferences, go to general, and you can toggle it off here. This feature gets a smoking hot rating for sure. Smoking hot. Next, we have new titles, generators, effects, and transitions. Let's start with the titles. You can find them in dynamic titles in your titles library. They actually added quite a few options. Maybe I'm just spoiled with the plugins I have, or maybe they're just not my style, but I don't vibe with them too much. Some are not bad though. For me, the titles get a not hot rating. If we head down to generators and go to dynamic backgrounds, They've added 12 new backgrounds that look fresh as can be. I'm a big fan of these. They're vibrant, trippy, and cool looking. Hot, hot, hot. This rating gets a hot one. If we head to our effects and go to color board presets, Apple has added 20 new look presets. And I know what you're thinking, these type of built-in look presets are always lame. And while I agree with you, what's cool about these is that once you apply them, it doesn't just apply a locked on effect, but it actually is applied as a color board so you can hop in and see the exact changes that were made to your clip. And if you want, you can go in and tweak the settings to fine tune them to fit your shot. Pretty neat. Will I use them? Absolutely not. But I can see why someone would. These get a hot rating. Lastly, we have the new transitions and you can find them under dynamic transitions and they match all the new titles that we just checked out. So my opinion of them is the same as my opinion of the titles. A little iMovie-ish, but some are okay. The best ones are Expressive and Skylight, in my opinion. Just like the titles, I give these a not hot rating. Next, we have the new ability to edit raw footage in Final Cut Pro. So let's say, for example, you're gonna bring in raw footage from a red camera. You'd search something like red raw viewer download, or because we know what to specifically search since it's on the Apple website, red Apple workflow installer. Download that to your Mac. And once you go through the download process, you can now finally import raw footage into Final Cut. And if you head to your inspector window and hit the info inspector, if you head down to the bottom, you'll see you have modify red raw settings. If you've brought in raw footage from a Sony camera, I assume it'd say Sony raw. And when you click this, it gives you the ability to make some quick adjustments to the raw footage before you bring it onto your timeline. So you can prepare it for another color space that you're working in, you can adjust the temperature and more. This new feature gets a smoking hot rating. Smoking hot. The last things are small things. I noticed that the keyer is now called the green screen keyer and both that effect and the luma keyer and some other effects have new thumbnails. This doesn't get a rating because it doesn't change that much. I just thought I would tell you. So what do you think? Do you give this update a hot rating or a not hot rating? Let me know in the comments and consider subscribing if you have not already. Have a great rest of your day, guys.